Right, we will make a start. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our County Grants Fund webinar. I'm sure most of you already know Matt from all the previous uh, webinars that he delivered pre-season. For those of you that don't know me, uh, my name's Nikki Clark, and I started with the foundation uh, in March and work alongside Matt. Um, as he's already mentioned, just some general housekeeping, please stay on mute, share your video if you want to. We are recording this video. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to use the chat box. Our MD John will be fielding any questions and there will be a chance at the end also to, to ask any more questions and we'll make sure those all are, an are answered. If we can't answer tonight, we'll make sure we take details and come back to you. Um, we've also got Neil Higginson from the ECB with us tonight, so hopefully he might be able to answer some more questions uh, if Matt and I can't. So tonight's content, uh, we will be covering what is the county grant scheme, the project themes that are eligible, eligibility within those themes, uh, key considerations for your projects, expression of interest and support from the county board, the application process and the decision making process. Uh, there we go, any questions in the chat box at any time. So the county grant scheme uh, aims to support affiliated clubs to create welcoming environments, provide enhanced facilities and playing opportunities, and to develop environment, environmentally sustainable clubs. We have three themes that will be eligible uh, for funding, which is creating welcoming environments, providing enhanced facilities and playing opportunities specifically for women and girls cricket and or disability cricket and tackling climate change. Tonight, we're just delivering headline information. Uh, the initial fund available needs to be delivered by the end of 2021. Uh, we are hoping to fund projects this year or into 2022 that will actually uh, deliver an impact during the 2022 season. Clubs may apply for one grant during each funding cycle. The ECB budget year runs from the 1st of February to the 31st of January, but you will not be able to apply for a second grant for the same project theme before 2025. Clubs are only eligible if actively engaged with ECB programmes, so that's All Stars, Dynamos, women and girls cricket and or disability cricket. The minimum funding amount is a thousand and the maximum is up to 10,000 per application. Uh, so I'm gonna pass over to Matt now, who is going to speak about the project themes. Thanks, Nikki. Can you just let me have control back at the top of my screen? Super, thanks, Nick. Right, so really excited about the, the county grants uh, scheme. Uh, it's something that we first mentioned in a roadshow uh, back in January 2019, pre-COVID, and how the world was back then. Uh, but obviously with COVID, this has been delayed. Uh, but now we're delighted that it is going to be available very shortly. Uh, Key project themes for this, and Nikki's already gone through some of them at uh, just a headline level. So our project themes. The, the biggest theme within it is creating welcoming environments. Uh, so we want clubs to be a welcoming, inclusive place for different users. So uh, female participants, disabled participants, our existing male participants, junior participants, and here is just an information slide taken from some research that the ECB have done into this uh, of feedback that clubs have had 
on their facilities. And there is a guide, which I will talk about at the end, uh, the ECB's Creative Welcoming Environments Pack, where they have done a lot of research working with Sport England to look at how cricket clubs can become more welcoming. Uh, and there's a really good pack, and I'll show the link to it at the end. But looking at some of the comments, and this may ring true with your membership. So it's a lovely old style pavilion, but can, be, can appear unwelcoming. Uh, only photos of men and young boy and young boys teams on the walls need women's pictures too. Changing facilities very small. Uh, so point of sales, only 33% of clubs have got contactless payment, which obviously has been quite a big thing during the pandemic with cash almost going out of fashion as an example. So here are, here are just some things which you need to potentially, you can start considering about and would be considered under creating welcoming environments. So if we just move, if I just move on to the next slide. So creating welcoming environments. To be eligible, you must be either doing women and girls cricket, actively doing it, engaging with our programmes, and either, do, and also, or and or doing ECB national programmes, All Stars and Dynamos. Uh, so the first area would be social space. So you could apply for new furniture, decorate, decoration, new flooring. It could be patios and outside, patios and deckings, heating, heating, glazing, just to improve the place where your members could spend an awful lot of time enjoying cricket, but also enjoying social activities at your cricket club. Toilet facilities, uh, it's something some of you may have heard in the past at one of our road shows around clubs doing surveys and finding out one of the reasons why females didn't really engage in their club. It was because the female toilets weren't very welcoming. They were using the brown towel rather than hand dryers, uh, which wasn't very welcoming. So if this is your club, you can use it to upgrade your toilet facilities. Uh, even start introducing baby changing rooms into your facilities. And the next one is catering. So looking at what you offer off the field. Uh, so kitchen, appliances, professional catering equipment, barbecues all co covered in this. So can you, it's a great opportunity to potentially bring your club forward in this space so you can offer more food options or start offering food options at your club to generate more inco income and revenue but also add another string to the bow other than just cricket. Uh, arrival and access so improving your car parking, dis disabled access so have you got ramps to make sure that people can get into your clubhouse if they have a disability uh, so these are all covered in, in the welcoming environment. As I said, there's a great documentation, which you may have seen when booking onto this about creating welcoming environments. And there's a link to this at the end. And Neil may offer some more on this later in questions. Um, Digitalisation. So one of the common things I, I met up with my nieces for the first time in about six months last week and we went out some, we went somewhere for dinner and the first thing they asked was, where's a Wi-Fi code? Uh, so a lot of young people are driven by Wi-Fi and access on their phones. So could this be something that you could use this fund for? So Wi-Fi is covered, broad, broadband hardware, TVs, PA music systems, uh, electric part, point of sale. So just coming back to what I mentioned earlier around only 33% of clubs having uh, card readers. Uh, so this could all, this is all covered within this fund. The second theme is pretty self-explanatory. So for this, you must be doing women and girls cricket or disability cricket to be able to apply for a grant under this theme. Two main parts to this one. Uh, so through this, you can apply for grant funding for a non-turf match pitch 
or non-turf practice facilities. Uh, both, if it, whichever way you went, you would have to ensure they're an ECB approved supplier. Uh, there is a list available from myself or Neil. Uh, so the, the ECB approved suppliers, they've gone through rigorous testing to meet the safety standards that the ECB have set for their systems. Uh, and with that, you would need to ensure that you have appropriate quotes and with anything where you're installing non-turf pitches or non-turf practice, you will need planning permission. You also, under this theme, can go for enhancing your changing facilities. So this is, as it keeps getting told to me, and Neil, I'm going to nick your phrase, David Lloyd Jims, uh, making sure that it's personal. So in showers, can they be individual shower units uh, for people uh, so they have their own privacy you can improve your toilet provision within your changing areas you could improve the decor uh, thinking also about personal possession lockers and you can even use this to enhance your existing facilities to make changes to your existing space one thing with this i will flag is if any of you have done, looked at trying to do improvements like this is the ECB have got a guidance document around things which need to be included if you're going to be funded. So trying to make changing rooms and areas 20 square meters for this, as it would be only making amendment, uh, that rule is a lot more relaxed on that. And we can make a local decision working with Neil if you cannot meet their full criteria. So we can do that on a case by case basis to make improvements which are going to make it better for female and disabled cricketers at your cricket club. The final theme, and this is also supported by Sport England and is becoming quite a hot topic uh, in the news at the moment is around tackling climate change. So within this theme, uh, it's there you can uh, apply for flood resilience projects and drought resilience. So if you're in a flood risk area, you can build protection, targeted drainage, ditch or culvert clearing to make sure that water can drain appropriately away from your ground. Uh, also with this rainwater harvesting, uh, so collecting the rainwatering and using it uh, as either grey water, but also maybe to pump back onto your square so catching all the lovely rainwater and rather than running up nice high water bills uh, you can hopefully pump it all back onto your square the next part is energy saving so improving insulation led lighting solar or thermal heating systems and then ultimately water management so again linking to recycling the water that has come from the rainfall uh, so those are our three themes uh, there's lots of things within there so i'm sure that many of you have got a project which may fit within there as i move on to eligibility a couple of key things before we start ineligible projects so if you have a large scale pavilion project or a project which is already being funded by the ecb or the england wales cricket trust you will not be able to get funding for this. So if, for example, I know some people in the calls are going through at the moment, large pavilion projects and they're quite a long way down the road with this, this fund wouldn't work for that. you will be coming out of another pot of money which will become available in 2022, which is run by the ECB centrally. There's also no retrospective funding. So if you've already started a project it cannot be funded by this. It's for new projects only. Some of the minimum eligibility criteria. So with any application, which Nikki will talk through in more detail shortly, you need to be affiliated to the ECB via us, the Somerset Cricket Foundation. You will need an ECB compliant constitution, ECB compliant insurance, security of tenure on your facility, that can be a minimum of one year, access to your financial account, and you need to adopt both the ECB safe hands policy and the ECB inclusion and diversion policy. 
and I must stress again, to be considered, you must be actively engaged with ECB programmes. So all stars, dynamos, women and girls or disability cricket. As you can see from earlier, some of the themes fit different areas. One thing I would stress, if your club currently isn't engaging with any of these and they're looking to do it for 2022, that is brilliant. And myself and Nikki and the rest of the development team will support you with coming on board with those programmes and met, trying to make them a real success at your clubs. Uh, but what we would like to see is those clubs coming on board with national ECB programmes in 2022, that they are they establish it and run it for at least one year. So any projects which are linked with them, and they've not been currently doing any of them, we'd be looking to consider their applications further down the line in 2023 because this program will run into 2024 as well. So there'll be three different years worth of this. Some key considerations. So a number of clubs on this call have benefited over the years from the ECB small grant scheme. This is not a replacement of that scheme. This is an all year round fund. Uh, so it's not a short, sharp window like we had before. Uh, it's, it's a it's a fund which can be applied for at any point. It's also dealing with larger amounts of money, which is really looking to make a significant impact to cricket in counties. So we're not looking, we, it's really important that you really understand what you're applying for and that impact. We strongly encourage you to engage with your members when developing your project. Really make sure that you, you understand your members' needs. So as a committee or a management group, you may have one idea and one plan, but your members may have a completely different idea of what they want from your club. So really consider that. And at the end, we will show you a link where you can access a facilities survey, which you can use very simply with your members. There is no, there is no rush. This isn't a cash grab, as I would call it. It's not about trying to gra grab money because it's available, because we want to make sound investment. So really consider your project and how is it what is needed? Do we have everything in place? So for some projects, you may it may be more than £10,000. So have you got partnership funding? So funding from other sources, funding within club funds to enable your project to take place. Also, does your project need planning permission? So there'd be quite a lot of projects which you require planning permission for. So without that, that is a barrier to you completing the project. We also strongly recommend, uh, and it is a requirement for some elements, that you have two quotes for any project that you're looking to deliver so we know that you have done some robust uh, check and challenge on what you're delivering the next part i'm i see there's lots of questions coming in and i'll have a quick we're, we'll pick them up later because they're not already been picked up just as a bit of a timeline here before i pass back over to nikki for us of how we get clubs so hopefully receiving money is there are three clear stages. First is an expression of interest and the form will be available as of the end of this meeting. So if you do have a project, get that form into us. And then as SCB staff, we will review it and then we'll look to support you to application process, which Nikki will go through in more detail next. You will then will be able to make an application to the ECB investment management system uh, some clubs would have already used this uh, for the Inspired to Play grant this summer. Uh, and then once we're happy as staff, we will forward it on to the independent panel who will review all applications and they will ultimately approve or decline the grant award going to the ECB. At this point, I will pass over to Nikki unless John or Neil shout and say there are some questions which need answering now. Silence is good. 
So, Nikki, over to you. So, following the facility survey sent out recently, we've already been in contact with some of our clubs about potential eligibility for projects that they've they've already started looking at. Uh, but we want to welcome expressions of interest for any projects that clubs have been thinking about that they haven't necessarily got that far down the road yet so that we can get involved right at the start of the process and make sure that the project is deliverable and is going to benefit both the club and the county. Uh, once we've received this form, either Matt or myself and potentially Colette as well, who's our Women and Girls Development Officer, will be in touch so we can get a better understanding of the project. Uh, we can have a look at its eligibility, work out where it's potentially going to fit into the funding that's available, look at that impact to cricket in Somerset on the national programmes, Women and Girls Disability Cricket, um, look at what stage the club is at with that project so we can determine whether it's something deliverable this year uh, in 2022 or whether we'd advise a bit more development time and maybe look to funding uh, in the second or third year so 2023 24 25 and then we will offer any support that is needed and relevant to putting through the application. Just quickly touching on the application process. Matt has already mentioned the investment management system. Some clubs will already be aware of this system. If not, we can send you the details. Uh, so anyone who's applied for the Inspired to Play grant uh, will likely already be set up on here. So if you are already set up, double check that your contact details are up to date and correct. If it might be that somebody's applied and moved on or not going to be involved in this particular application. If not, you do need two contacts within the club to, to go on the system. Uh, the foundation will deal with any application to when you sign up initially. So when you add the contacts, so there might be a slight delay whilst we, we do that just to make sure that everything checks out with your contact. Uh, David Barton, the expression of interest form is separate to the investment management system and we'll send out the details for that. Uh, when you apply on the system, the eligibility documents that Matt mentioned are going to be needed. Um, if you're unsure about your constitution, we're happy to check that out and make sure that it is um, valid and you know fits in with the ECB expectations. Um, but it's better to have all those documents in advance before you start the process, just to make it easier, as well as uh, the two quotes that Matt's already mentioned, make sure all those details are available when you put in your application. Uh, the foundation then have 30 days to review the application. And if they are successful, we will forward those details on to the ECB to offer to send out the grant offer. So clubs must not proceed with their project until that grant offer is received, because otherwise it will tip it into um, retrospective rather than current. So the SCF decision-making process, the, the ECB has devolved the decision-making process to the Cricket Foundation. Uh, so we will be managing it locally and be able to prioritize the, the projects accordingly. There are lots of opportunities between now and 2025 for funding applications to be made. Like Matt said, it's not a rush. There is funding available at the moment till at least 2025, but there's also a finite amount of money each year. So we're gonna be looking very 
carefully at all the projects applications that come through to make sure we are supporting the right projects and that we'll have the right outcome for both the club and the local community and the, the foundation in general so it's not going to be looked at on a first come first serve basis so you don't need to rush anything oh oh no how do i go back thank you so we want to work closely with clubs right from the start uh, so we can make sure that everything is bang on rather than we'll see an application at the full stage at uh, the application stage and then there might have been things that have been missed and it just makes the process smoother if we can get on board right at the start and the local decision making panel will be the SCF managing director John Bendley is on the call tonight um, there'll be a foundation trustee and an ECB facility staff member who will help uh, review the applications before we proceed to the ECB. Having this group of people uh, look at them will ensure that it's a completely robust and transparent process. And if clubs are unsuccessful, we'll endeavour to contact them to make sure they know why and see if there's anything we can do to help them get eligibility. So the next steps. First of all, there's a lot of guidance notes and it's definitely worth reading them. Tonight is just a general overview of the, the, uh, the, the grant fund and what the eligibility is and what the projects are. If you do have a project in mind, make sure that it does represent the wider club's needs, get feedback, make sure it's going to align to the project themes and aspirations. Consider if your project is deliverable in 2022 or whether it's worth pushing it a year or two to ensure that it does what you need it to do. And if you feel you have a project or if and when you feel you've got a project, you can complete the expression of interest form or if you want to talk to Matt or I informally before you even get to that stage, then our contact details are on here um, and on the website. So are there any questions? That haven't already i think we've already answered a couple in the in the chat box thank you to neil for answering heather's question yeah neil john is it just worth very quickly running through some of the questions which did come up in case people weren't they were concentrating on what me and nikki were saying rather than seeing what was coming in just if, if there was any headline ones through. There's a just couple of put, questions, <clears throat> excuse me, just coming in now as well. So is there a time scale for completion once awarded? Uh, yeah, that will be in the contract award letter. Um, from memory, I think it's about a month to six weeks. It's uh, another good question, David. So yes, it has to be a single project. So for example, if you were gonna go for a pavilion upgrade now, that's fine. But you then have to reapply next time round for practice facilities. Yeah, Paul, I will, dis I will send out all the slides and the recording tomorrow to everyone so it's, you've got it in advance and then it will be sent out to all the uh, rest of the clubs who weren't on the call tonight on Friday as part of our club the roundup. Um, Neil, that is the next question is probably more for you. So how long between our approval and an offer from ECB? Um, it's turned around quite quickly. So it's all on the investment management system. So once you approve it, the contracts will go out electronically. 
Excellent. So very similar to Inspired to Play if you had yeah. that grant. So yeah. I know that most of those are being turned around within 48 hours, weren't they? Yeah. Any is there any more? For Thanks, any more? I've got no idea, but we'll, I'll get back to that in a minute. Matt, can I just jump in a minute? Yes, John. Um, good evening, everybody. I just want to reiterate Matt and Nikki's points around our engagement with you as our clubs. Um, for me, fundamentally, it's really important that you engage with us as early as possible uh, because we want to be that support mechanism. We want to take hold your hand through this process. We don't want you to work in isolation and just randomly submit an application to us without us knowing about it. Um, and that's why we've put the stage of the EOI, expression of interest in the EOI so we can actually come out to you and engage with you and, and hold your hand and learn and, and understand more about the projects um, and the, uh, kind of the second point to that is is from a re review panel board decision making process we need to make sure that the investment is going into Somerset into the right places our challenge is to ensure that we get as much money from the ECB and I'll say this openly with Neil on the call is to get as much money from the ECB into Somerset as possible um, but we need to make sure that that is fair and equitable and it's going to the right places that, and it maximises our potential to grow the game of cricket in Somerset in the right communities. So, again, reiterating the point, this fund's going to be around for two or three years. Let's not rush. Let's get your right, the right projects at the right time for, for your club so you can maximise the cricket activity in your venues. So, three points. Collaborate with us so we can support with you. Don't rush. Um, and let's maximise the, the income. Thanks, John. Just I just added an extra thing. Another thing of engaging with this early is we may also be able to point you in other pots of money because there may be other pots of money which can supplement this to enable you to do an even bigger project. So the earlier you engage, the better from that point of view. Uh, I don't think there's any more questions come through. So I'll just quickly move on to the final slide. As I say, someone else has just put a comment in. So here is some useful information which hopefully will help. So they're all clickable links. So we've got the County Grant Fund guidance. Uh, so three page document with all the guidance notes which you will need to consider when making an application. The next one is a link to the ECB Creating Welcoming Environments Guide. Brilliant piece of work. One of the best workshops I've done with ECB in a long time. Clearly a lot of work and effort has gone in by Neil and his facility teams into this. Really study it and have a look through it because there are things in there which you clubs will not have considered. There was stuff in there that I hadn't considered. So please use it. There'd be little nuggets of information in there which you'll go, oh, we hadn't thought of that, but that would be applicable to our club. Then we've got two documents which very much linked to saying we've got the ECB facilities review checklist. So almost an audit of what you have as a cricket club and your facilities and you rate them. And then the ECB facility survey. So getting that out to your members to get a real good understanding of what their thoughts are on your on your facilities so those documents will all help you get the right project to get to us for eoi uh, so david that is a good question your primary affiliation at kilmington would be with dorset because that's where you're geographically based so dorset will also be running the scheme i don't know how they will run it neil may be able to offer you more on that so your application would have to go through Dorset, not Somerset, because we would only deal with the primary, so clubs who are geographically based in Somerset. So it's great that you've come on tonight and learnt about it, and I'm sure Dorset will be very similar, uh, but it would be yours would be going through Dorset. Neil, please shout if I've got that wrong. Um, primary affiliation will be Dorset, I'm afraid, and um, Dorset are running the scheme. However. The county board manager, Keith Brewer, <coughs> leaves at the end of this month. Um, the new person doesn't start till October. So there will be a slight delay, but 
<clears throat> Dorset have put details of the County Grant Fund on their website, so by all means have a look, David. We are in Wiltshire, so it may be that you go to Wiltshire. Theirs is live because they did their webinar last week. <laughs> they did, yeah. <clears throat> We, I will do. We'll do some digging, David, and email you to confirm whether it's Wiltshire or Dorset you're after go to, and get just confirm. So okay. yeah. that's not a problem. We can do. Me and Neil, me and Neil, we can find that for you. Excellent. Right. Well, from our point of view, we have gone through all the basic headlines for tonight. I will get these slides out to you all tomorrow with the recording. I uh, hope you found it useful and uh, we look forward to hearing from you via email or our expression of interest form as soon as possible so we can start supporting you uh, achieve your facilities goals through these funds. Have a good rest of the evening. Thanks, Thanks Matt. Guys, Thanks, Nicky. Well done. Thanks, Matt. No problem. Thank you.